uh, recently I got a bug. And by recently, I mean today. I also got another BMW, but the BMW is over at my in-laws because it has a broken power steering pulley and that belt also drives the alternator so it's not drivable and it won't stay running. Today during my lunch I looked up how to remove the front bumper on this because I wanted to make sure the radiator's not uh, broke or have a hole in it. I drove this one home from my in-laws. It has this dent here that's the the total out of it which isn't too bad definitely drivable headlights broke need to order a pair of those I'm gonna get some black ones because they look better and this one's all foggy anyway but I was looking on the internet and I was trying to find some videos on how to remove the front bumper turns out there aren't any the only videos on there were videos of people that already have it off or people that just have written instructions. So I thought I'd make a quick video, see if we can figure out how to get it off. From what I've read, I also have to remove the fenders as well. I'm going to try to avoid that. But from what I also read is there's some bolts either back here or behind here that aren't accessible without taking the fenders off. So I guess we'll see how that goes. But first things first is I will start pulling some of these. It appears it's a, I guess a T40. Be my guess, not fan. But I'll go grab some sockets. Actually, I'm gonna put a battery charger on it because this thing's dead again already. And uh, I was gonna drive it in the driveway so everything was close. So let me get a battery charger, we'll put that on, and then uh, we'll see if we can take the front bumper off, see what happens. Okay, battery charger on and charging, and I think it's pretty dead. 1%. I'm not sure you can see that, but yeah, 1%. Anyway, turns out it is a T30, and I'm going to start by undoing this one here. Two, three four pop that headlight out and uh see if we can manage this without taking the fenders off from what i read though it's not worth it because I, I don't know i guess it's hard to get to but it seems like taking the fender liners out and the fenders off would be more work there was a guy on the forums that swears that it's way more work to uh do it without taking the fenders off so let me take these off and then we'll see what happens. Okay, I can already begin to see why this might be the case. If you come under this side, there's a, a bolt right there that I cannot get my socket on. Maybe there's two. I could even see that other one. Yeah. So, maybe we'll jump start it and get it in the driveway and get it on some jack stands, pull the wheels off, pull the wheel liners out, and uh, go after the fenders. I probably need to look up how to take them off down here. Maybe they're on the inside of the fender liners, but we'll have a look. I forgot to mention it's a sport model, so you get these interesting wheels. It's got the leather, nice bolstering on them. It was really nice driving it. Five-speed manual, monsoon stereo. Has a few miles on it. It's got 226. Uh, I like when you open the hood and see one of these. But that also means it's about due for another timing belt. Might have to add that to the list. The one thing I did buy, I had to order some things for the the BMW I mentioned earlier. Uh, I needed one, a new one of these because the gasket on the inside is worn out. So all that will be coming, but let me get this jump started. We'll move it over in the driveway and uh, work on it over here. And that is why I want to look at the radiator. I'm getting that blinking light. So either I don't have coolant or I have a bad sensor. I feel like this hasn't been run in a while. It runs a little rough.
It's kind of weird there's no temp gauge on this car. Maybe that's normal? My friend has a GTI and his has temp gauges that work. Let me uh, see if I can get this pulled in the drive and we'll work on it some more. Okay, well, we're going to go with the fender removal. So scratch that idea. But there are, let's see. I took that one out. Just want to make sure I got the right size. So there's one there. Two, three, four, five, six. That I can see. And from what I can tell, they are... What is this, T20? Yeah. So T20. So we'll pull those out from each side. And then we'll get after the uh, bender some more. And go from there. I figure you guys don't need to watch me do all this, right? Just sticking this guy up here, maybe. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Might have made this too long. All right. But yeah, you get the point. All right, so there was a bunch more than what I thought. There's some going up outside of this, all the way down. So pretty much just find all of them, pull them out. And the next step will be, uh, these appear to be 10, but because it's German, they're probably eights or something weird. So we got one, two, three. There's more here, let's see. Four, five. Six, seven. I think all the others are on the outside, up in the engine bay. And then maybe let's see this guy here. This uh, bumper. Uh, I can't think. Support, fender support, right there. I so it all just keep the same. You go from T twenties to tens to. Maybe back to T20. But yeah, we're gonna pull all these out and then we'll come up here and pull these ones out. We'll see if that'll free up the fender. And if so, we'll go to the other side, free up that fender and uh, see if we can get the front end off. But yeah, we'll go from here. I think these are 10s. I guess I should probably find out before saying that they are. So help me if they're like nines or eights. Bless my heart, they're tens. Okay, here we go. Hey, so on this side I did this exact same thing. I took all the 10 millimeter bolts out. One thing I need to mention is down here on the bottom, it has two of the T30s that you have to remember to take out and then 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. Then you gotta remember to do the two bumper supports, one there. And on this side, I undid this one because I couldn't get a, I couldn't get my socket up there because of the air intake. But undo the fender things, supports. Undo your lights, blinkers. Looks like I got a fog light wire. I need to clip right there, right there. And uh, I'm gonna unplug the other side. I couldn't get this headlight out. Looks like it would been broke before. But I mean, that's the whoa. That's the whole front shell. Gosh, dang it. Coming off already. So I'm gonna grab some snips, clip that zip tie. Oops, sorry. Clip that zip tie and then I'm gonna undo the, the blinker on this side. And I think it'll come off. And she's off just like that. So now I get a look at the damage. So this is this side. I'm not sure how this light is being held in because it should be loose right now. Maybe it's just jammed in there. Anyway, so if you look at it, looks like we got a little tweak right there. And it's kind of, that's about it. A little one there too. I don't think it hit the radiator. So just need to pull this out a hair. This is all steel, so that shouldn't be too bad. And then I got a little crinkle in there. That's not too bad. I was thinking the intercooler might have had 
issue, but appears to be solid as well. I don't see any brakes or anything in it. Can't see the radiator in there, so maybe I just need to hook this up to the truck. Pull that out a little bit. Straighten that down a little bit. Pull this out. Frame rail looks good. Just curious why the, the coolant light was on, I guess. Maybe it's just low. But it's good to pull it off to fix it because I was going to replace the headlights too. And I cannot get this one off. Because they're supposed to have these metal retaining clips on them according to uh, the 1A Auto video I watched because they have amazing videos. But there is no clip. There was a single Phillips screw holding it. Oh, oh, got it. There we go. So we'll just unplug. Shoot. Uh, anyone need to use headlight? But yeah, so that's all good. We'll get some new headlights ordered for it. Um, I'm gonna let this, I need to hook the battery back up, but let it charge. Maybe tomorrow I'll see if about pulling all of this out, at least pulled out more than it is. Doesn't look like it's pushed in that far. Yeah, looks like I could just hook it right, maybe right there. Give it a pull, straighten it out, and then I guess I'll be looking for a hood. This one's kind of kinked, not real pretty, but I've had worse, so if I need to make do, I'll make do. Pretty excited to have another turbo car. I haven't had a turbo car in a long time. It's kind of been uh, eating at me. So when I saw this one going cheap, I was like, yeah, we'll risk it. So far, so good. Only downside is, is there's not a lot of mods for this, for the bug. There's a lot for the Passat, the Jetta, but there's like, there's not a front mount kit for these. You gotta custom do one. I don't even know if they do stage tunes for these. I think I can get a tune, just not sure what it'll gain me. I don't think they make intakes either, because this one looks quite a bit different than the GTI my friend has. Because he, he has a lot bigger fenders, so he has the box here, and then he has a pipe that runs along here that goes down. And mine just has the box here, and then it goes down right behind the headlight, right there into the fender. I don't know. Not even sure it's worth putting stages into, if you can even consider them that. But maybe I'll look into a tune. Maybe I'll look into PCV delete because I know these are awful. It's bound to throw some check engine lights for me. But yeah, that's where we're at. I might call it a night. I'm gonna collect all my my bolts because there's a crap ton of them and uh, put all this up in the garage. Hey, and while we're at it, I'll give you an update on the bus. I've been kind of working hard at it in my free time, which there's not a lot of. I grabbed this rocking chair from my uh, late grandfather's house. It used to be him and his wife's watching TV chair, so that's pretty cool to have on the bus. Built a little platform for it. Thought my wife could be co pilot in style and comfort. Just need to get it strapped or attached to the wood. We found a couple tables at a local thrift store. I sliced the end off of it and put one of the legs in the middle. Need to attach that to the floor and need to attach the legs to the wall, but pretty solid as is. Okay, I lied, it's not. Definitely needs attached. Um, I started work on the bunk beds. These ones are solid. 
can't move them if I wanted to. Got the top done, got the bottom done. The only thing left is to attach those back ones. I haven't screwed anything to the wall of the bus. There hasn't been a lot of videos on how people actually go about doing that. So I'm kind of winging it. Um, I cut these table. This is our other tabletop or table we found at the thrift store is this. It was a two piece. This one was around this side to make one long one. So it's pretty nice. I didn't even have to cut it in half. It was already done in half. And they're actually the right width too. So they don't take up all the walkway. And I'll be able to fit a sink in it. And we only need a stove as well. Here will be the other end of the couch. Also my grandfather's. So also cool. And then we got a lot of room over here. I still don't know what to do with those. But we're going to do, I think we're going to do a cabinet. Cabinet. A uh, pantry type thing and a fridge. We go on this side. Just need to box this in or get rid of it and get a fridge we were thinking just a little apartment size one since we won't be living full-time in this this is more like go camping go to drift events go to out of town for a weekend kind of thing let's go hang out in the woods so we're not gonna be living in it so it's not gonna be fully awesome like the other buses you see online but it's gonna fit our needs which are just going out camping uh, going to car events, that type of thing. And this is this is the uh, queen size bed back here. We kind of, I mean, we still got to decide if we're doing something with this. Because if so, we have the width between this bunk bed and the heater or our bed to put um, a closet, I was thinking, right here. But this, will, this is a queen size bed, which leaves us about, not a lot, so what is that? A little over a foot for storage back here to open the door and access the storage area. Might not be enough, but I mean, kind of limited because of the, the heater here. So we could technically move the bed over top of the heater and just not use it for now. And then that would give us a lot more room back here. Just need to decide because this isn't the height of the bed. We're definitely going to go higher. Um, I was thinking almost either that line there would be the top of the bed, maybe even higher. But I also want to be able to sit on the bed. So if we did this, like the top of the mattress here, I think it'd still have enough room to sit, be sitted. Seated, sitting on the bed. We'll see. Now, the other thing that we're talking about is a DIY compost toilet. Because one of those nature head, I mean, they look pretty awesome, but they are $1,000, which is half the price of our bus. So it's hard for me to justify that. So I've been watching and reading about a lot of DIY ones where... You put a bucket in, you use sawdust, and it's kind of emergency only type thing, not, hey, I gotta go to the bathroom, let's just go use this one. This is like, I don't know, you're out in the middle of the woods and there's no rest area or there's not a rest area for hundreds of miles type thing. But according to Idaho law, you have to have a bathroom to get this registered as an RV. So we're, we're kind of debating what we're going to do with this, how far we're going to go with the DIY toilet. But for the cabinets, we are, I'm going to cut a hole, put that, drop the sink in it. We're going to get a hand pump for water and get some 5, 10, 20 gallon jugs to go under here. Get a propane for under here and a tabletop stove and a fridge. And I think if we get all of that framed in, put in, etc. Oh, and wiring. Yeah. Can't do solar because that is way out of our budget. So I was looking at getting some batteries, having them charge off the bus, and just running a generator until we decide that we want to bite the bullet and spend thousands more dollars on a 
solar system. But that's not in the budget right now. I would like to mention though, that so far we have spent a total of $125. All the lumber I've been able to get for free. I was gonna make a video on that where I've been getting it. I mean, it probably looks like it's only $125, but I mean, the bus seats were free, couch was free, chair was free. That table was 20 bucks. And if you noticed, we're using the other part of the table for that toilet. This table was 40, but all the lumber has been free. All this I've done is free. I'm gonna sand this top one, let the kids paint it. And then we're gonna use all the wood over here that we uh, collected as well for free. All that wood we're gonna repurpose and use for like the sides of the, to make the rooms, the wall slats, and also the uh, cabinet slats on the side over here. So we're trying to be budget. I gotta get new wood for the, the queen mattress back there. If you can't tell that one board's really dipping down, they're kind of crappy wood. But I wanted to use crappy wood to see if that's what we really wanted before cutting up what I thought we were going to have to buy. But we haven't had to buy it yet. So now that we kind of have a layout what we want, I can go back to what's called the Hatch Pit here in Idaho Falls. And I can uh, scavenge some more and see if we can get some more 2x4s for free. Because we're going to have to build that bed up. And some slats in it too. And if we're going to span that far, we might have to have a little more slattage than those beds. Yeah, that's where we're at with the bus. Uh, it's still, still going. But yeah, there's your quick update. Still got both Titans. Still waiting on title, so I can't sell that one, which I want to sell. I like the other one. But yeah, I'm out.